All right, hello. So today we're going to talk about the periodic table. I'm going to go over some just some really basic stuff about the table and the, uh, the basically how elements are organized, uh, what you can do with the information you find there, how to find the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons and things give, uh, given certain characteristics and properties, uh, how to write stuff in isotope notation. Just a, It's just going to be a really quick review. So let's get right to it. So the periodic table. All right, this is your periodic table. This is the one you'll be using. And zoom in a little bit. And you will see that the periodic table is organized by these little numbers here. Uh, specifically, it starts out with a 1. Then it goes 2. Then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. So that, that first number, that's the atomic number, okay? That's this thing here. That's the most important thing on the table for each element. The reason is that that number identifies uh, what is unique to an element. So if it has, a, if an element has that atomic number, or if an atom has an atomic number like that, that is just what the atom is. All right, that's its unique thing. That's what makes atoms unique. Nothing else really makes a difference. It's the atomic number. And the atomic number is, this is equal to the number of protons. So the atomic number is protons, all right? And that's a big one. So atomic number, protons. Um, <clears throat> the symbol is just the, the symbol. It's just, you know, the symbol that you're going to see. Uh, first letter is always capital. Second letter is always lowercase. Uh, then there's this little thing at the bottom here where it's called the average atomic mass. Right now, at this very moment, the average atomic mass is not something that you really need to worry about too much. All right, you'll notice it has a decimal, uh, almost all of them, and we'll we'll get into that more next week. But the average atomic mass, it's just, it's just there. It says it's the sum of the number of protons and neutrons that something has. Uh, but again, we'll talk about that more later. So now, a few things about the organization of the periodic table. All right, just a few organizational things. Let's get this focused. All right, so on the periodic table, all right, up and down. So these rows or these rows and columns and stuff on the table, like it's all organized in such a way that is designed to provide you with some information. So the first thing I want you to know is that there's certain terminology that's used when you talk about the periodic table. First, up and down, that is columns. So columns on the periodic table. These are called groups or families. All right, so groups or families. It depends on you know, it depends on what your uh, well, it just depends on what you want to call them. It's pretty much used interchangeably. Now, horizontally, all right, horizontally across the rows, those are called periods. So those are called periods. So there are eighteen groups. They're numbered one through eighteen. There are seven periods. They're numbered one through seven. All right. Um, <clears throat> as you go up and down, you can, you know, you can just sort of see that, that like there's shared characteristics, like all these elements over here, they're the alkali metals. All of them, they react very strongly when you put them into water. Uh, this is like an example. They produce hydrogen gas and they will eventually catch fire if put in warm enough water. And depending on which element it is, it's more reactive as you go further down. They can also explode when you put them in the water. That's kind of cool. So there are shared properties. There's a bunch of groups that have names, and we'll get into that another day. But that's just the basic idea of the periodic table. All right. Now, a few other things to talk about. So next, let's talk about just sort of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So we know that protons, neutrons, and electrons are, you know, they're the, they're pretty much what we're looking at here with the atomic group. There we go. Now, uh, first, protons and neutrons and electrons, they're all really small, like really, really, really small. So we don't refer to protons, neutrons, and electrons in uh, by their actual masses when we talk about this. Instead, we just we use relative masses. So this is all kind of meant to be reviewed from what we already talked about, so I'm going a little quicker here. So we say that a proton, generally written P with a positive, because, you know, protons, they have a positive charge. All right, the proton's mass is one. 
So we'll say the mass. And it's not it's not uh, one gram, it's 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 specifically one AMU, one atomic mass unit, which is just a it's like a relative mass that's designed to have this make sense. Because the real mass of a proton is like 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th or something, or 24th, if I remember right. So it's really, really, really small. A neutron, written like with a little n and like a zero because it's neutral, no charge. Though you don't really have to write the zero, we'll just write n normally. Uh, it is also a mass of 1 amu. And then an electron. Electrons are so small that we say relative to protons and neutrons, there's zero. <laughs> now, that's not always the case, obviously, in that, like, an electron has mass. But we're just saying its relative mass is zero. All right? So this is important for you. The reason it's important is that you're going to have to use these masses uh, to do some calculations with elements, some basic stuff. Uh, in addition, all right, in addition, we say that if you add up the protons plus the neutrons in an element, that is equal to an element's, or I should say an atom's, mass number. All right, the mass number is used to identify certain things. Now, in addition, uh, you know, we know what the mass number is now. We know that the relative masses are what it is. Uh, sometimes an element can have a charge, or sometimes an atom can have a charge. All right, that means that the positive and the negative particles in the atom do not add up to, to, to zero, basically. It means it's not neutral. So if something is neutral, if something is neutral, then that means the protons uh, is equal to the number of electrons because protons are positive, electrons are negative. If something is an ion, that means the protons are not equal to the number of electrons. You can have positive ions, you can have negative ions, it doesn't really matter. It just depends on what you have. So let's talk about a few examples here and then we'll do some other calculations and we'll go from there. So to begin with, let's say we've got, uh, let's say we've got a, we've got, we've got an element that has, we'll do oxygen. So let's say oxygen here, represented by a big O. Oxygen has eight protons. That means oxygen has eight positive particles in it. Let's say oxygen also only has, or let's say it has 10 electrons as 10 negative particles. What is the overall charge in that oxygen? Well, it's pretty simple. The way you can just do it, you just got to say, okay, I have eight positives, I have 10 negatives. I mean, if you want to just keep it really simple and say eight, just you know, positive eight plus negative 10, what's the result there? Well, it's a negative two. So you would say oxygen has a negative two charge. You'd write it like that with the, net, with the negative behind it, too. It can be a little confusing, but that's just what you'll do. So that's the basic idea there. Uh, another example, let's say that we have... Uh, let's say that we have potassium. Okay. So another example, potassium. Potassium has 19 protons. So it's got 19 positive protons, and it has uh, 18 electrons. All right, so if you've got 18 electrons, uh, then you can add these up again. So 19 positives, 18 negatives. So, you know, that's going to result in potassium having a positive one charge here in this case. Because, again, you've got 19 plus negative 18 equals positive one. So that's how you can calculate ions. All right, so that's the ion calculations that you might have to do. Just wanted you to be aware of that. Uh, and then there's also isotope notation, which we'll talk about uh, in, a, in another video right after this. So basically, this is just the idea of atomic theory. Uh, the, just, you know, how to 
just calculate some really simple protons, neutrons, electrons, uh, some basic introductory stuff on the periodic table. Um, we'll do, you know, we're going to go into it in a lot more depth, but just remember, so on your periodic table, you know, vertical, those are groups, horizontal, those are periods. Uh, the atomic number is the number of protons, and that's how you go across the table. And that's about it for you. So that's the first video.